Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. This is Talisa McKnight, and today I'm going to talk about the use of tarot for inner self-change and self-transformation. And I will also talk about ways that this can be used in magic and also the importance of tarot as a symbol system which is the language of occultism. So I would like to remind my viewers that new videos come out every Saturday morning. So if you do enjoy this lesson, be sure and hit the subscribe button and uh, new lessons come out every Saturday morning. And if you would like to support my work, then below in the description box is a link to my Patreon account. So anyone that wants to support my work can click the link. Um, and I certainly thank those that do choose to do so. Um, so today's topic is dealing with tarot as a tool for inner alchemy and self-transformation. And um, not to digress too much in this video, normally in my videos I get pretty much straight to the point, um, but I believe this is my first ever video in which I am somewhat clean shaven. So I'm not going to lie y'all, I'm a little bit self-conscious, so try not to be too mean uh, roasting in the comments. Anyways, but I digress. Anyways, so tarot could be used as a tool of self-transformation. Basically, how this works is that the different cards could be seen as a type of mask. A type of mask of the psyche. In which you could work with that the cards represent you. All of the cards, of course in a reading, um, often it does represent outside situations and other people, but in this context, each of the cards represent also an aspect of oneself. So that within one individual, there are many different aspects of our psyche. And tarot is a way in which we can learn to consciously switch on and off different aspects of our psyche. We can learn to develop various aspects of ourselves which are beneath the surface. We can learn to get into contact with aspects of ourselves that are, may be repressed in the unconscious. So really this is about bringing the unconscious aspects of ourselves to the surface so that we can have more of a whole or complete being. <clears throat> and of course there are many different ways to look at alchemy. Um, Although some people look at alchemy entirely as a psychological or spiritual um, aspect of things, I think that that's incomplete. I do think that uh, there is a laboratory aspect to alchemy, absolutely. I think that it is both. And I also think that modern occultists tend to overly emphasize the so-called psychological spiritual aspects. I, I think that uh, it is a little bit of an imbalance, but I do think that it's relevant and important. Um, I just think that it's a little overly emphasized while not looking at the other aspects of things. But anyway, um, Carl Gustav Jung, the Swiss psychiatrist, uh, he looked at alchemy from the perspective of analytical psychology and uh, he actually wrote a marvelous book called Psychology and Alchemy um, and I've read this book it's very good 
Um, from his perspective, the symbol of the great work, which is the male-female figure representing the, the union of opposites, this had to do with our conscious, um, our conscious mind's union with the unconscious. Um, that enlightenment is based around making the unconscious conscious. And what that basically says is that if you can look at the personality as represented by an iceberg, a very small fraction of the iceberg is, is uh, outside the water, but the vast majority is beneath the surface, hidden in that our personality is the same way, our conscious ego, our, our outward personality that we're normally aware of in other people, that really there's a whole lot more to ourselves than that. So working with tarot can bring these other aspects of ourselves to the surface. Um, it could help to get us into contact and to develop various aspects of our nature to switch on and off different aspects of our psyche, or to get in contact with parts of ourselves that are undeveloped, or maybe they are developed, but we just want to work more with this aspect of ourselves at the time. So as an example, the emperor could be seen to represent an authority figure, um, to represent a leader, a powerful leader, an emperor, okay? So this could be used, let's say that you need to become more assertive. Let's say that you tend to be kind of submissive with people and kind of, you feel like you get pushed around a little. You need to get in contact with your own inner assertive your own inner ruler in a sense, not that you're going to become domineering or anything, that's the negative aspect of it, but just become a little bit more assertive. In order to become balanced, you could meditate upon the Emperor card. Um, and I don't mean just meditation as sitting and visualizing the card, certainly you can do that, but throughout the day, going on about your day, Hold this image in your mind and think of it as your own self. Think of the Emperor tarot card as a mask. Hold this image in your mind while thinking of bringing these aspects to the surface. You're bringing out that aspect of your own nature. Hold this image in your mind whenever you think about it. You know, go on throughout your day, like you don't have to like just hold it the whole time, but you go on with your work day or your school day or whatever you're doing, and whenever you think about it, think of that image of the emperor on the throne. Bring this to the surface of your mind. Hold it. Breathe life into it. Become it. So sort of as an actor, you play that part. Bring this to the surface of your mind. Of course, I think it's important that people try to, you know, you don't want to come off weird by just like switching, like being too obvious. Um, I think that that should just be a given. People should understand that if you're just suddenly switching to another mode, people might think it looks kind of weird. Um, you might want to be a little subtle with it, but what you're doing is you're, you're gradually bringing these different aspects to the surface. Or, let's say that you're a creative writer, and you're having writer's block. You could meditate upon the Empress to bring out your own creativity. And it is kind of a suggestion to your subconscious to bring out um, your creative side of things, okay? Or if you're an architect, or whatever, you're learning to bring this aspect of things to the surface. And uh, so, yeah, there's that aspect of things. Um, the, the four suits represent different aspects of ourselves as well. Um, cups represent emotions. 
swords represent intellect. Uh, pentacles or coins represent the material, physical, bodily aspect of things. Um, wands represent energy and drive. So let's say that you've been low on energy. You could meditate upon the king of wands or the queen of wands or whatever the case may be. Um, and then also the king of wands or queen of wands is also kind of an assertive figure. Um, so you can use this also to bring out this authoritative, assertive aspect. It represents energy and drive. So let's say that you've been low on energy. Let's say that you've been feeling drained. You may think of the King of Wands or the Knight of Wands or whatever. Um, hold this image in your mind. Whenever you think of it, um, imagine you might, maybe throughout the day, whenever you think of it, you might visualize the Ace of Wands and then take deep breaths while visualizing yourself being filled with fiery energy. And again, wands are often associated with the element of fire, which represents energy and drive. So just whenever you think of it, you can go on with your work day or your school day or whatever. Whenever you think of it, just take a moment to visualize the Ace of Wands and take some deep breaths. And visualize that you're being filled with fiery energy, which is energy and drive. Being filled with fiery, hot energy and drive. Breathe it in. Believe it. And if you're thinking this might be the placebo effect, effect you're absolutely right. This is, this is working with placebo to an extent and suggestion. Breathe in that fiery energy. Believe it. Believe it. Believe that this is the case, okay? You're learning to switch your mind into the mode that you're, you're energetic, you have drive, ambition, you're full of energy, okay? This is kind of like hypnosis. Well, that's really in a, a hypnotic state, but it's a form of suggestion. It's, it's learning to switch on different aspects of your mind. It will. Or let's say that you feel like you need to get in touch with your emotions. Maybe you're someone that is not very in touch with your emotions. Um, you could memorize the, you could visualize the Ace of Cups and imagine yourself being filled with cool, soothing water. The waters of emotions and feeling. Breathe it in, or you might visualize yourself as the Queen of Cups, or the King of Cups, or whatever. Um, let's say that you've, from the other aspect of things, let's say that you're full of energy, fiery energy, and you need to calm down. You, you, you know, you're so wired and full of energy, you need to calm down. Then you might think of the waters as cooling, soothing, relaxing. You may visualize the cup and, and the waters and breathe in watery relaxation energy. Okay? Um, or you might think of the Queen of Cups or King of Cups uh, with, a, with a calm lake. And again, you don't have to, you can sit and visualize as an actual meditation, but you can also do this on the go. Um, while you're out there in the world. Um, swords could be used uh, to, let's say that you're overly emotional. <clears throat> let's say that you're dealing with a breakup uh, or something that's very emotional. And maybe you need to think logically about things. Maybe you know that, rationally, you know you're too emotional and you know that you need to think rationally about this, okay? You need to think with your mind instead of your feelings in this particular situation. So you might imagine the Ace of Swords, which is harsh, by the way. A, a sword can be harsh. It, it cuts away. Um, you know, think of the Ace of Swords, King of Swords, Queen of Swords, whatever, Knight of Swords, Page or Princess of Swords, Prince of Swords, whatever. Um, imagine the swords. 
Or if you want wealth or to become grounded, you may think of the king of pentacles. Let's say that you've been bad with money. Let's say that you spend too much money and you're irresponsible. You may think of the king of coins or the queen of coins or whatever as being ultra responsible with money. This is an aspect of yourself. It's there. You do have, believe it or not, all those uh, people that blow money everywhere, believe it or not, there is, there is a saver. There is someone that's good with money deep down. You just need to bring it to the surface. There, there is that aspect of yourself. You do have that potential, that quality. So even if you have a bad habit of going on shopping sprees and then you don't have bill money, um, there is that responsible aspect of yourself. Bring it to the surface with uh, the king of coins, queen of coins or pentacles or the page or knight or ace of coins, whatever. So that as you can see, you can bring up your responsible aspect, your emotional, your drive, your intellectual, you know, bring up more reason or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, so there is that aspect of things. The, the tarot has often been used to represent the Kabbalistic tree of life. Um, we have, this has been obviously the case in reading occult books since the time of Eliphas Levy, and it may go back further than that, but people that have written books that clearly show that it's associated with the Tree of Life begins with Levy. Um, you know, the, the ten pip cards represent the ten sephirot, and uh, the four court cards represent... Uh, Chokma, Bina, Tiferet, and Malkut, the four suits, the four Kabbalistic worlds of Atzalut, Berea, Yetzira, and Asiya, and uh, the 22 majors uh, represent the 22 paths connecting the Sephirot on the Tree of Life. So you could, uh, you know, meditate upon Gebera or the Five of Wands or the Five of Cups. So there are many different ways that you can do this. These can, these can also represent situations that you want to manifest in your life. So I encourage people to really play with this. Um, and then another aspect of tarot is that these are symbol systems. These are, are symbol systems that we have um, that really symbol is the language of occultism. And in my last video, I really went into depth on this topic. So if you want to go deeper into this topic of symbol systems, then I encourage you to check out my last video. Um, but uh, yeah, really more esoteric occult decks, such as the Rider Waite, Smith deck. Um, although many people say that Arthur Edward Waite put blinds in the deck, I think that that's really overly emphasized. You know, I, you know, you're willing, you're free to have your opinion, but I flat out disagree with people that emphasize that. Uh, I think the Rider Waite Smith deck is an important deck, uh, esoterically and uh, symb symbolically, and that many later decks are derived from that deck. So I think that's a very good deck. Um, the builders of the Aditum or BOTA deck. Um, and uh, the Thoth deck of Crowley, these are some of the more esoteric occult decks. And some are just more about, like, looking cool than uh, deep, rich occult symbolism. Um, but the more occult esoteric decks based on the Golden Dawn, Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn deck, um, that design, you see symbol systems. And um, you see in Crowley's 777 um, how symbol systems, how working, it help, it tarot is a mnemonic device that helps you to memorize these associations, to internalize them in consciousness. And uh, with the use of this, you can know how to 
uh, you can construct an entire ritual out of this. Um, but really, that's another topic. Uh, tarot can be used uh, for spells. It could be used for all kinds of things. But today, I'm talking about this as a tool of self-transformation. Um, as many people would call it alchemy, but really, I think that uh, alchemy is much more than that, um, which is an entirely other topic, and really one that I'm not uh, too well versed in. But um, today I'm talking about tarot as a way to switch on and off different aspects of your psyche. So as always, I encourage people to go try this out. Experiment. Um, my lessons come out every Saturday morning. If you really follow my videos, you know, video per video every Saturday, you know, spend this week at least, spend this week using tarot in this way. What do you want to bring out in your psyche? So think about that for a minute. What do you want to bring to the surface? Do you want to bring out your inner emperor? Do you want to bring out, you know, more of your logic, more of your emotions, your feelings, your drive? Um, you can meditate, like as an actual meditation, or you can just bring the card to your mind throughout the day whenever you think about it. Think of this as a type of mask, okay? You are an actor. As a Shakespeare would say, we are all actors in the game of life. Um, so, act the role. Play it. Play Because really you're not acting. You do have these aspects of your psyche. Bring it to the surface. And that is a way that tarot could be used as a powerful tool of self-change and self-transformation. Um, anyway, um, new videos come out every Saturday morning. If you want to support my work, then click the Patreon link below. Below in the description box is a link to my Patreon account. Um, my videos are always free for everyone, but I do appreciate those that do so. Um, anyways, new videos come out every Saturday morning, and uh, thank you for joining me today. And have a great day, everyone. I will see you guys next Saturday.